Hi, this is Mike, and I'll be taking you through uh, the beginnings of how to program in the Python language. Now, as you know, Python is a programming language which allows us to be able to develop um, processes that a computer can follow to be able to process data. But first of all, we have to understand how data is stored using the Python language and how it can be processed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the whole idea of um, what data is inside of the program language and how each individual section of it can be uh, handled. So in this first beginning lesson, we're going to look at numbers and how they're stored. Now, the first thing you need to know about numbers is that there are um, a number of different ways of processing numbers. So the first example we have is what we call an integer number, which is basically a number that doesn't have something like um, 0 0.1 or anything like that. It simply just has a 1 or a 2 or a 3. And that's an integer number. That's how we'll classify that. The other kind of numbers we have um, are going to be classified as floating point numbers um, for the very basics to start with. So a floating point number can be something like 1.2 or it can be something like 2.3, 0, 0, 0.4. The idea is that the the number um, actually floats around that point or that period in the center. And when you do the, uh, the type command for the number one, it should say int. And if you do the type for this floating point number, we should get float and the reason why we separate the differences from these ones is that those different extra numbers on the end of that floating point number alter the way that python stores that information now at this stage it's not massively important that we know that it's just that when we come to doing calculations it affects the outcomes that you get in the end for instance um, if we do one times two oops we do one times two remembering that the times symbol in Python is asterisk not X we get one times two we get two times two we get four if we do two point two times two we get four point four so the answer to that particular um, sum that we've just done there is going to be coming out as a floating point number. Now this doesn't seem terribly obvious later on but in your programming efforts you'll find that sometimes when you generate results from mathematics like doing multiplications or additions or anything you may end up getting an integer where you want a float or a float where you want an integer and the way that you can actually in enforce that you get either one out of that is by using the int and float uh, functions. Now we've got this first section here so we've got that that sum there we know that that's going to come out um, as a float number. If we want to force it to be an integer on the way out we just need to wrap that little sum in the int function like so. So we've got this int and then the open bracket and then the close bracket to say that this part here is actually going to go inside of the function. And what we should get out, of course, is an int, which is 4. We can check that again by using type. And we can wrap the outcome of the int function in the type and we should get an int out of there. Now, this isn't terribly useful right now but it's important that you know how to be able to check different outputs, data types. So as a beginning, we've established that there are integers, which are whole numbers, and we've established that there are floating point numbers, which are numbers which have a point something on the end. And we can tell the difference by using the type function. We can also force them to be something by using the int function which will force to be an int. And finally, let's force 
2 times 2 to be a float. And the way we do that is we wrap the outcome of this sum in a float function. And that will come back as 4.0. You can do this with uh, simple numbers. So you don't have to do any multiplications or any, any processing like that. You can simply wrap an int or a float number in an int and it will give you the, the integer version. On the other side of things, you can actually go um, 3, oops, float 2, and that will give us 2.0, which is a floating point version of the 2. So you can interchange between those two different types. Now, the, the most simple and basic idea behind programming is the idea of using variables. What variables are, are basically labels that point to a value. So, for instance, if we have a, a variable like... Um, maybe something along the lines of um, miles. And if we say that miles equals 2.3... We now have a variable in memory that we can restore, we can ref reference to, and it'll give us that value 2.3. Now, if we have um, something like uh, days, and we say 2 days equals 2, we can then start to use that in a more meaningful way when we do our calculations using Python. For instance, if um, we decide that the distance covered by somewhere, so distance equals miles times the number of days, we know that we've already stored inside of miles 2.3 and we all know that we've already stored inside of days 2.3. So we can then begin to construct these kind of calculations in more sensible, human-readable ways. And that's really the key to, to using variables, is to understand that they abstract away the idea of the value of something and let you write it out in more human and understandable ways. And that's really what Python's all about. It's about being able to understand things clearly and in a human-readable way. So if we do distance equals miles times days, we should expect that that would be 2 times 2.3. So it would be 4.6. But we've written it as distance equals miles times days. So if we type distance, we should now get the value at the prompt. And that says 4.6. But the way that we calculated it, obviously, is way more understandable and as a result we can then use that kind of way of dealing with values in a, a way that will help us to write out processes that we can understand and that the computer can understand as well so that's the introduction to um, python and the use of um, integers and floats and also your introduction to the concept of variables and in future um, tutorials, we're going to cover things like how to do uh, things like processing um, words and strings, uh, lists and all sorts of other things. But now that you've got the basic concept behind those variables, we'll be able to understand more clearly what, what's going on in there. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, click the like button. And if you want to see more in the series, then click the subscribe button. And you'll get a notification as soon as one a new one's available. Thanks for watching.